Hello, traveler. I wasn't expecting visitors to my home. Can I help you? Rent? Of course, of course. I have the pouch somewhere around here. Ah, here you are. One month's rent for Mr. Goth. Wish him well for me. Why do you look so surprised? Easier than usual. And just what is that supposed to mean? Do you really see me as a rent-dodging pauper? How rude. I'll have you know I am doing quite well for myself. Thank you very much. I even dined at Good Hunter this evening without anyone covering the tab for me. Yes, well, it is that time, isn't it? Everyone flocks to astrologists and fortune tellers at the end of the year for readings on the year to come. I've read so many star charts this week, I can practically see the constellations behind my eyelids. Not that I'm complaining, of course. It is noble work. Your fortune? Well, as it so happens, I've recently come across a new divination tool that might just work on you, even though you are from beyond our world. If you have the time, would you like to help me test it? Wonderful. Come in, come in. Take a seat just there, and I'll fetch my cards. Here we are. Are you familiar with tarot cards? This deck is from Sumeru, though I believe it takes inspiration from Fontaine. Naturally, as you might expect of scholars, there is much debate over the accuracy of tarot. But once I saw the illustrations in a diviner's catalogue, I simply had to have the deck. Over 70 gorgeous art pieces! You'll see in due time. First things first, I must ask you to shuffle the deck. It is important that you do it, as you are the one whose future we will be defining. The cards will absorb your energy, aligning with you to tap into the lines of fate surrounding you. That is how they'll know what order to come out in when I lay them out in the spread. For you in the coming year. Knocking sets the question in, you see. In tarot, we lay the cards out in patterns, with each position holding a specific meaning. This particular spread is known as the Celtic Cross. It will give us a deep look at the answers in store. Now, 
when reading the cards. Each tarot reader will have their own unique customs and practices for the order they do things. As for me, I shall flip the cards over one at a time and read them individually to you. But it is important to know the entire spread is connected. We may very well start to see different story threads arise, connecting these cards together the further we go on. I will also warn you that sometimes the futures waiting for us are hard to accept. While your fate is already decided, if at any point you feel you don't want to hear what the next card has to say, you are free to stop and leave the table. Understood. All right, then let us begin. The first card in the center here represents your present, both your situation and how you are processing it. Oh, you have been working hard, haven't you? This is the Ten of Wands. It shows us that you've been carrying some heavy burdens, but you've found the strength to push on because the end is in sight. That is quite in alignment with the end of the year, isn't it? The second card resting on top of the present represents a challenge coming to you, or perhaps a challenge you already find yourself in. While life can have many challenges at any given point, this card shows the main challenge that, if overcome, would make your life much easier. <sighs> A familiar struggle. The Ace of Pentacles. The start of a new financial journey. Perhaps now that you have finished the previous work, you are worried about where your next job will come from, or what it will be. New beginnings are quite intimidating, aren't they? Especially where Mora is involved. Let us get some clarity here. This card to the left of the center is the past card. This will show us how you got to this point, and where the challenge stems from. of cups. There are a few potential meanings I could see here. Was the project you've been working on a creative endeavor, perhaps? Cups represent creativity and emotions, you see, and the ace is the very beginning. Another way we might read this is that a new relationship in your life has pushed you into new financial positions. Were you supporting someone? Or perhaps was someone else supporting you? I see. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. We should look at the rest of the cards before we make any judgments. Yes. Since the card on the left was the past, the card on the right is the future. More specifically, it will show us the next steps coming on this journey. Our first reversal. The cards have different meanings when they come out upside down. The Three of Cups here normally represents coming together with like-minded people, but in reverse, it focuses more on alone time and independence, perhaps even a feeling of social overwhelm, or, as they say, three is a crowd. Looking at these three cards of past, present, and future together, it seems to me you will need to take some time apart from whatever it is you've been working so hard at. I see some serious self-reflection in your future. 
perhaps even reconsidering whether you want to leave your current situation altogether, be it a job or a relationship. As we've seen with your challenges card, new things are certainly coming. But we can't say anything for sure until we get some more insight. The above card should show us your goal, or at least the end result you're hoping for. It's the best possible outcome you can get from all this. Ah, see? The Two of Swords reversed. This doesn't surprise me at all. It's a choice card, and in reversal, it tells me you've been struggling to make an important choice. You feel caught between your options and paralyzed by indecision. You aren't even sure what your goals are at this point, so the tarot can only show me your struggle. Maybe a dive into your subconscious will help. The below card should show us all the feelings you've pushed down or overlooked on the matter. Things that are going on under the surface, impacting your life under your very nose. This can be a hard card to take, so brace yourself. Oh, the Nine of Cups. What an interesting place for it to come out. Well, you see, the Nine of Cups is the wish come true card. In my opinion, it is one of the happiest cards in the deck, in fact. For this to be a subconscious factor, holding you back from making a choice, are you afraid of making changes because you've become comfortable in your daily life. Perhaps you're holding back from taking a risk and chasing a dream because you're afraid of losing the life you have now. Be careful here. It is easy to delude yourself into thinking life cannot get better than it is right now simply because it is comfortable today. That is quite a beast to contend with. Are you alright? If it's any comfort, the next card is an advice card to offer you insight on the situation and how you might resolve it. Would you like me to keep going? Okay, then let's see what advice the universe has for you. The Seven of Pentacles, but reversed. I see. Normally, this is a card about investing in your projects for long-term success, but in reversal, I think the universe is very much telling you not to be blinded by the cost-sunk fallacy. You should definitely take some time apart and ask yourself if things you have been spending all this time on are truly making you happy. Don't tie yourself to something you don't enjoy simply because you've already spent so much effort on it already. Spending more effort won't make it suddenly fulfill you. With that in mind, let's see what outside forces are affecting you. Please note, these are almost always forces beyond your control. It is best to be aware of them and navigate around them, rather than trying to change them. Hmm, a reversed Four of Cups. The world is growing quite overwhelming these days, making you just want to curl up under the blankets and hide away for a while. That's understandable. While it's important to make sure you don't totally cut yourself off from human interaction, it's okay to take that time away from the noise and the chaos. You can use your time alone to do some self-reflection and decide what it is you truly want. Only two cards left, 
But I must admit, the penultimate card is quite the conundrum. This card will show us your hopes and your fears, which can be quite contradicting. We may learn something very surprising about you here, if we can manage to parse the meaning out. Are you ready? The Eight of Pentacles reversed. <sighs> Have I made you nervous? All this talk of self-development and self-reflection is quite intimidating to you, isn't it? This card tells me as much. In reversal, it speaks of self-development, perfectionism, and misdirected energy. I expect you are both hopeful about and dreading self-reflection. Are you afraid you will discover something that completely changes the way you live your life today? That can be positive, you know. Taking the time to get to know yourself can only lead you to creating a life in alignment with what you truly want. The final card here is the outcome. Will that help soothe your fears? Bear in mind, tarot cards are a much more flexible divination tool than star charts. This card will tell us where the path you are currently on is headed. Should you find you are unhappy with the result, then you can still change the direction and find a new perspective. Shall we look? The Empress! Worry not, dear traveler, all will end well. The Empress is a card of abundance and creativity, and most importantly, self-love. This tells me that all your reflections will bring you to a happier, prosperous life. Let go of your fears about change, and trust in yourself to build a better life you will love. Huh. <sighs> Quite the interesting read. I'm not quite sure how I feel about using these cards as a divination tool just yet, but how do you feel? Are the gears already turning in your mind, forming plans for the new year? I hope my wisdom will serve you well. And don't worry about the Mora. Consider this reading a gift from me to you. I wish you a prosperous new year, traveler. Take care.